Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair? And welcome back to my channel. So it's Saturday and we are doing something different today. <laughs> it's something I've been thinking about for a while. I've been wanting to do a series on my channel called Small Talk Saturdays. Basically during the series, I'll be getting to topics that we can chat about in the comments and have a nice little discussion. But I want to kick things off with a nice Q&A session because I never did one before and I just want us to get to know each other. So right now I got my kimono on. Yeah, I probably have seen this kimono quite a few times because I love it. But I'm about to change my clothes and we're gonna head upstairs to my studio. Okay, let's go. All right, to the studio where the magic happens. My setup here is very basic. I have all of my materials I need for my wig reviews. And there's my ring light. Here I am. Let me get you guys situated over here so we can do this q and I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Drop me some comments down below and let your girl know. Okay. I love this window because it just gives awesome lighting. What you looking for? Trying to see if I can see a baby. Are you blind? I was just. Girl, I thought I'd drop my wine. It's yummy. Of course it is. I was going to this week, so. No Aldi? No, no Aldi. Hey, YouTube fam. All right, so we have a totally different setup today. I am here on the floor and I'm ready to get into this Q&A. Now, like I said on Instagram, I announced that I am starting a new series on my channel and it is called Small Talk Saturdays. I want to kick off with this Q&A because I've never done one before and I get a lot of questions about my personal life and what I do outside of YouTube. So I figure now is probably the best time to get into all of those nitty gritty details. You didn't say me it's Gladys. What? You didn't say it's Gladys. Oh, I did. I used to hate you too, fam, and start talking. Oh, oh, also I did a little intro before, oh, before downstairs. Um, chill, I was gonna say something about that. Now this Q and A session is going to be a little bit different than your average. I'm gonna be answering questions about myself that you've asked me on Instagram, of course, but I'm also gonna ask you questions as well at the end of this video, just a few. So feel free to participate in the comments, answer my questions, let's have a nice little discourse together and really get to know each other. All right, so I have my computer here and all my questions and we're just gonna dive right in. I'm excited. Okay, first question. Where are you originally from? Are you originally from this country? Are you a DC native? So no, I'm not originally from DC. I actually was born outside of the US. I was born in France, in Paris, France. That's a long story short, but yes, I was born abroad and I came to New York when I was about three months old because that's where my immediate family is. Most people are normally like, oh, since you're born abroad, like, do you speak French? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not fluent, but I am conversational. Oui, je suis française, mais je n'ai à Paris et je grandis à New York. So yeah, just a little bit of French for today. I've been taking French for a long time, you guys, literally since I was eight years old long time. It's very hard to learn another language unless you are immersed in that entire culture. So yeah. Oh, one cool thing about being born outside the country is that I do have dual citizenship. So I guess if things go crazy here in the US, I can always go to France, right? As far as my mom and dad, that's different. My mom's side is actually from Trinidad and Tobago. So I have a, a very heavy Caribbean influence in my life. And my dad's side is from Guadeloupe in France. My mom and dad met in France fell in love in France, had me over the span of two years. So pretty crazy love story for a whole nother video. All right, next question. Who is the real H.U.? Come on now. If you don't know what H.U. is, that's referring to my alma mater, Howard University. It's kind of like an inside joke between Howard University and Hampton University. They're both historically black universities, but they have like a friendly competition between each other. So people often ask like, well, who's the real HU? Obviously it's Howard. <laughs> 
If you went to HBCU, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear where you went, where you represent, because Howard is a big part of me and it definitely changed my life. Next question. Your friend group seems amazing. Where did you meet them all? Hey, Kia girl. <laughs> So I met my friend group currently, like the friend group I have in DC, literally, oh man, like in my neighborhood. One of my very best friends, Erica, I met her at a brunch. And from there, I met a whole bunch of other people. I actually met my current girlfriend through my best friend. Crazy, right? They started through brunch or just like outdoor activities. I met my other best friend, Varsha, at like this really fun party that was going on. DC is just a very social, transient city, especially when it gets warm outside. There's just so much to do, so much to like look into. And it's just really easy for people to meet each other. Once you find one person in DC that knows a little something, it's like your social life explodes from there. If you're that type of person, if you are more extroverted, but even if you're more introverted, there's still lots of things that you can do in the city, which is why I love DC so much. Okay, let's see. What made you get into hair? Let me tell y'all, I have been playing around messing with hair for as long as I remember, since I've been maybe seven, eight years old. My mom, she used to get like these little ponytails, not ponytails like you see now with clips in them. She had hair like tracks of hair that she would wrap around into a ponytail. So I started doing the same thing with my hair. Like in high school, I would take some of my mom's old tracks and wrap them around my hair and make ponytails. They actually looked really natural. I used to love combing and curling my hair. It was just a lot of fun for me. Mind you, back then I would have never envisioned hair being a thing for me as an adult. For me to talk about hair with others, I never would have imagined that. Because I never wanted to be like a hairstylist or anything. I just enjoyed playing around with my hair. I did have a perm at one point, like a relaxer, but I went natural my sophomore year of college because I was just tired of having straight hair all the time. And I was just like, uh, I'm over it. Trust me, when it comes to hair, I've done everything you can think of. I obviously had my natural hair out. I've had super short hair. I've done weaves before. I've had a Caesar, like literally my hair was nil, barely even there, like a shadow. I've done that twice before when I was like 24, 25. Love short hair like that, by the way. And now I'm doing wigs. It's definitely been an evolution. What inspired you to get into YouTube and how did you get started doing wig videos? So let me start with how I even started thinking about wigs. I was on a girl's trip in Miami. I was 25 at the time and my homegirl had this bob wig from RPG show. I thought it was bomb. It was a beautiful bob. And from there I was like, wow, but that price tag is steep. So I started searching on YouTube for affordable options and a slew of synthetic wig reviews came up and I was like, what? I had no idea this was a thing. Like people review synthetic hair. Like I didn't even know. And from there I was hooked. And I was watching people like the Hearts and Cake 90, which is my boo Brittany. Hey boo. I was watching Trendy K. There were so many people back then. Eventually wigs to Wasteland. That was awesome because she was like someone who was my complexion that I could look to when it came to wigs. I just wanted to add this part in because I started having memory loss. But these are the ladies that I watched consistently regularly like all the time hearts and cake i watched trendy k i was absolutely obsessed and still am <laughs> with digging her style and her videos lovely Lashawn, love her content girl rates world oh my god what happened to her is she okay does anybody know let me know if you know if she's all right wigs to wasteland natural joy i threw in these throwback videos just to drive home the point that i've been watching these ladies forever and they definitely inspired me to get into the wig game. That's how I got into watching hair videos. As far as me doing it myself, I started thinking about it, I would say like around 2018 when I started my Instagram just for hair. I actually have a personal Instagram that I haven't touched in like over a year. I'm thinking of bringing that back. But yes, my hair Instagram, I started that in, in January of 2018. And pretty much started building a community there. So by the time I started my channel in January of 2019, I was pretty much, I wouldn't say ready to go, but it was like I had all the tools I needed, which wasn't much. I had my phone. I had just gotten a new phone, an iPhone, and natural light. So I was like, let me just stop playing and get in front of the camera. People kept asking me over and over again when I was going to come out with a channel, and I used to kind of laugh it off because I was very uncomfortable. But as you can see, I've come a long way since then. <laughs> I definitely give credit to my girlfriend C because I remember my birthday 2018 when I turned 29 she bought me this backdrop 
holder that's supposed to hold up big backdrops. And I was like, oh, this is so sweet. Thank you. And she was like, come on, you keep saying you're going to start this YouTube channel. Like, let's get it popping. And I was like, you're right. I need to just choose a date. And the date I chose was MLK Day, January 21st. is that your hair was born <laughs> how did you start collaborating with others i started collaborating with people really because one person asked me when i had first started shout outs to candace because that's the first person i collaborated with her channel name was fashion tamer but i'll put her new name down here so candace and i collabed and from there i would do it every so often when someone would ask i didn't start asking anyone to collab with me until i did my is that your hair holiday series and at that point i was literally asking like my friends in the wig community to like collab with me and i really like it because it fosters camaraderie and your different audiences love seeing you come together like a lot of people in my audience watch a lot of my wig friends as well so when we join forces people are always excited to see that like what you and this person collab that's awesome so I, I like to spread love in that way how did you and your gf meet how long have you and c been together y'all look good together and seem so happy <laughs> That's my boo boo. I met C through my best friend Erica, and we met at least the farthest back that I can remember is seeing her at a brunch. But I already knew who she was back then. So it's hard to remember the first time I met her, but maybe this time was the third time. We were in totally different relationships, and I wasn't checking for her at all. And I assume she wasn't checking for me. Or maybe she was, because you know, your girl is pretty cute. <laughs> From there, we were cool because we started running in the same circle. And it wasn't until the end of the year when I normally have my annual birthday party. It's normally this big house party. And she came to my birthday party and that's when I guess she decided she wanted to make some moves. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me. Let me see, that was in 2017 right that was like 2016 so like in 2017 we started like really getting to know each other vibing and next thing you know we're together actually we will be celebrating our three-year anniversary in june so i'm pretty excited about that not excited that we're still under these like lockdown circumstances but we'll figure out a way to celebrate but yeah she's my boo she's like my partner in crime and we had a lot of fun together and let me tell you one thing i love about c is her level of support i'm sure you guys have seen her in my premieres on youtube she comes to like almost everyone i can't think of one that she's missed honestly and she knows my love language is words of affirmation so you know i think she's been trying to speak that more often to me when i reached 10k she got me this cute card and it says to my beautiful wife hmm i don't have a ring on my finger but is she trying to say something <laughs> and she just wrote me this really nice message when i reached 10k so i appreciate her a lot and during this quarantine we're definitely finding more ways to connect with each other and also like encourage and motivate each other because you know we all have our moments where we start feeling like a little bit down and i'm just happy to have her during this time why is your girl so sexy see, see get out of my inbox let me tell you she sent me these questions and i could not with her i'm like girl let me tell you what she sent me what is one thing you're, you regret as a big-headed youtuber see why is the Bronx so dirty? C. <laughs> I can't stand this girl. Oh my God. But I will answer one of her questions. What's one thing I regret? The only thing I regret with YouTube is not starting sooner. I wish in 2015 I even had the thought to start my own channel. You know what I mean? But I had no concept back then of what YouTube really was. All I knew was that there were videos on a platform and I watched them. That was it. Everything else I was completely unaware of and I feel like I started learning like on the job. You know how when you get to a job you start and you might not have all of the backing for it yet but you have to start the job? This has been an on the job learning experience from day one. My only regret is just not starting sooner. That's it. But even still, it's not like a full on regret because I think I started when I was supposed to, when I was like primed and I wouldn't say completely ready, but ready enough. All right, next question. What is your primary and secondary favorite color? I would say my primary color 
it used to be blue but now not so much i would say i just really like earth tones i like yellows golds greens bronze those are like my primary favorite colors you know it's funny the teacher in me was just like do they mean like what's your favorite primary color like do you like red yellow or blue <laughs> because those are primary colors oh my god girl i need to go to bed and what is my second favorite color i guess blue what is your hair care like underneath the wigs right now i am so bad at taking care of my hair y'all i just don't moisturize it enough and for some reason every time i take up my braids to get them rebraided my hair still is in a pretty healthy state considering i don't moisturize it nearly as much as i need to and maybe it's because i'm not manipulating it because my hair dry is a freaking forest fire and that shit whoop, and that joint will snap off don't follow what i do i need to follow what y'all do what do y'all do to take care of your hair on a daily basis i know what i need i need moisture and creams to kind of solidify the moisture but let me know how you guys take care of your hair what is your favorite wig brand well a lot of you know i review synthetic wigs mostly on my channel i would say right now outre is freaking killing the game t -t top tier top two and you ain't number two outre is hitting you know why they're my favorite because they have really bomb textures whether it be light yakky or very yakky or kinky straight their textures are great they also have a solid cap construction nine times out of ten and they are geniuses when it comes to marketing like that whole niche release completely genius why don't more companies do that? You should look at what your top sellers were a few years back and bring them back, revamp them, and make them better than ever. That's what Outre did with the Nisha Soft and Natural series, and I'm totally here for it, especially with the way Outre does their colors. Synthetic wigs were very much like 1, 1B, one 2, 99J, number 30, 27. But Outre has come out with a slew of other nice colors you know, cinnamon spice and hazelnut honey. I just love the flavor that they're bringing to the synthetic wig game and I'm just, I'm just totally here for it. So Outre is my number one right now. Have you always been open about your sexuality preference? Ooh, good question. So in case some of you don't know or didn't figure out <laughs> earlier in the video, I do have a girlfriend, meaning I do like women. And that's something that came about in my early 20s as far as I guess when I realized it. Prior to then, like I dated men, like I dated men in my teens, going into my very early 20s. But I met my first girlfriend when I was 20, when I was 20, right? Yeah. And then we started dating when I was like 21, no, 22. As far as always being open, I mean, I, I feel like since I've started dating women, I automatically became open about it. It wasn't something I was proclaiming off the hilltops per se, but I wasn't ashamed of it. And luckily the family that I come from, they're super supportive of pretty much everything I do, as long as it's not like harming me, but they support me. And so when I, I guess, quote unquote, came out to them, they had their questions, but they were, they weren't against it. They were fine with it. I know my mom, she was a little bit concerned about how people would treat me knowing that I like women. And I totally understand that. But I assured her, I was like, you know what? I am who I am. And I'm not going to let other people's fears and negative projections affect how I move throughout my life at the end of the day. So I'm not concerned. There was a time where I was still kind of teetering about like, you know, I really like this girl, but I don't really want to date her, be in a relationship. But honestly, by my second girlfriend, I was totally sure of who I was and my sexuality. And I just thank God that I didn't have to go through the motions with my family when it came to that. My friends too, they were super supportive. They had a lot of questions. They were like, girl, what? Like, I'm sorry, but you've been with dudes for as long as I know you, so what the hell is all this? <laughs> I just had to explain to them like, well, things changed, you know? What is your dream job? My dream job is something that doesn't feel like it's a job. My dream job doesn't feel like a chore. When I wake up to do this job, it feels like I'm walking, living, breathing my purpose. 
That's my dream job. I am a teacher and I've been a teacher for seven years now. I felt for a long time that I was really walking in my purpose. It just felt really good knowing that I was making a difference in my students' lives and in their family lives, you know what I mean? But I'm at this point now where I am tired of being in the classroom. I could do it for another year, but I'm tired. I'm a little burnt out. I just am trying to figure out now what I want to do next. I know I don't want to move up the ranks and become a principal. Like, I have no interest <laughs> in dealing with that level of craziness. It's a lot. I know because I was a mentor teacher for a year and they had me doing work like an assistant principal. And I was like, bump this shit. Like, I'm not. Y'all not paying me enough for this. Y'all not. Y'all not paying me to halfway run a whole school. And I'm supposed to be a mentor teacher. But I digress. So I know that I want to help people in a way that is transformative. I want it to be on a broad scale. And for a while, I actually considered going to grad school for social work. Even though my undergrad degree from Howard is in communications, radio, TV, film, and French, I was like, you know what? I've always been interested in the psychology of people and I thought maybe I can translate what I want to do into the social work field because it's very broad. But now I'm not too sure about that either because honestly, with this whole thing with YouTube, it's really opened my eyes like in a way that I did not expect whatsoever. People literally make their whole living on here and then some and they're super passionate about in whatever niche that they're in. And I just feel like, you know, I don't know if YouTube is going to ever become a full-time thing or if I want it to be a full-time thing, but I do know that I don't want to work for someone else. And that was something I used to be deathly scared of. The thought of being an entrepreneur absolutely terrified me. I just felt like I don't want to do like a regular nine to five for the rest of my life, but the idea of starting my own thing severely intimidated me. So the fact that I'm here now where I literally watched myself build something, my brand right now is That's Your Hair, I literally built that from the ground up. And here I am, you know, a year and five months later, almost a year and a half later, and seeing what it's become with all of my efforts, I'm like, wow, Gladys, if you can do that, you can, you can build a fucking empire. You know what I mean? I, I don't know, like, I have to think about it more, but I know that my vocation in this world is to help others in a way that they're not able to help themselves. And I'm trying to figure out like, what's that journey, what's that trajectory looking like? You know what I mean? I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Why are your birthday parties so lit? <laughs> <laughs> Ashley! <laughs> Okay, I have a birthday party every year, you guys, and I've been doing it since 2015. I call it my naughty or nice holiday party, holiday birthday bash. Oh, yeah. Happy holidays! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. What's up, Happy birthday. 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 Happy yeah. And it really became a hit within my, you know, network of friends. I've had a lot of people come out. This past year, for my 30th birthday, talk 30 to me. For my 30th birthday, I had a good 150, 160 people come out. And that's how it is every year, except for the years prior. It used to be at my house, which was crazy. Think about house parties that you may have went to when you were a teenager slash early 20s, basement parties, stuff like that. It had that type of homey feel with bomb music, bomb drinks, and everything was free. I really like bringing people together and my birthday parties was just a nice way to kind of close out the year and get everyone together that you may not have seen in a long time. In the midst of COVID-19, it's gonna be the first year that I don't have my birthday party. It feels weird, but I was actually ready to shift from that anyway, since I'm like 30 now. I was thinking of doing something maybe a little bit more upscale, but we don't even know if we can leave the house yet, child, so I don't know. <laughs> I might be right here on this floor when I turn 31, sipping in the same glass, pretending I'm still 30. <laughs> the way this is looking. All right, my favorite book. Oh, great question. Let me tell y'all, when I was younger, I was 
definitely like super into my work, my schooling, reading. I mean, I like watching TV and being with friends, but I definitely was what you would probably call a nerd. I just was a nerd with a lot of friends. <laughs> And I loved just getting lost in books. I remember I had a teacher in my after school program who would let me choose any book that I wanted from the library. And it, it was really nice that she would let me do that. I also used to spend hours at the library on the weekends because sometimes my mom would have to work. And low key, she like let me stay at the library while she would work like her maybe six hour shift. Look. I was young, we're not gonna say how young I was, but she did what she had to do. Miss Sandy, the librarian, she used to watch me at the library. The 90s was a crazy time, y'all. But I, I just really fostered a great love for books due to my family. I would say childhood books. I love Goosebump books, oh my God. I love Babysitter's Club. Do you guys know that book, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day? I love that book so much. So much that I still have it. Here it is. One of my favorite childhood books. I love this book. You guys should check it out if you don't know what it is. Another one of my favorite books from childhood is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. It's a coming of age story. I don't know why I liked it so much in retrospect because the main character was so pessimistic, but I don't know, I found, I found it a little bit endearing. Now when I was a teenager, I loved me some Sister Soldier, so this is like one of my favorite books from that time. The Coldest Winter Ever. Yes, I still have the physical book. This is Bay. I could read this over and over again. I love the themes in the book. It could be a little raunchy, but I like it like that. <laughs> now in my adult life, one of my favorite books is this book right here. It's called Difficult Conversations, How to Discuss What Matters Most. This was really helpful for me when I was a mentor teacher and I had to facilitate some difficult conversations in my meetings and so forth, especially between people that did not like each other. So this was super helpful. Honestly though, I don't read the way I used to you guys. I really slacked off and it's something that I really wanna get back on. I do have a planner. This is also my favorite book, my planner. <laughs> this book has really helped me stay on track. You know, I just feel like I'm getting things done way more efficiently than I ever was before, especially in regards to YouTube. So this is like my favorite book right now. And I create it all by myself. How many wigs do you own? Y'all want to see how many wigs I own? <laughs> Let me take you to the closet. Y'all about to see for real. This right here don't make no sense. It does not make sense. How much, how many weeks I have? Here I go. All right, y'all. This is the coat closet in the living room. But I organized my closet to fit all these wigs. These are all the wigs I have. Like, and there's more back there. This is freaking ridiculous. I haven't had a wig sale yet, but I'm definitely having one in June because these got to go. Not all, but 90% of them have got to go. It's like over 100 wigs. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, y'all. So I just realized, whew, I need to catch my breath from running up the stairs. But this video has gone on for well over 30 minutes, like 40 minutes. I don't know how this is going to turn out in editing. And I still have like 15 more questions. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... Still have this post on Saturday and do this as a live, most likely on Sunday. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below and let me know what time you would want me to go live on Sunday. This pretty much closed out my 10K q and I'm so happy that I got to do this and share a little bit of myself with you. I really am all about transparency, so having this type of discourse with you all means a lot to me. Now remember, it's not just about me, you guys. I wanna know about you too. So answer these questions for me. What's your name? Where are you from? And tell me some things that you are very passionate about in your life. Tell me some things that you're working on changing in your life. Let's have a conversation in the comments because you know I love when y'all talk to me. Also, I am about to give away some money because I am so happy and so pleased with the outpour of, of love I received when I asked for questions in Instagram. And there are two people that stood out. Vibing with Kia 
and STY Mommy. Both of y'all just won $20 each because you guys contributed several questions. You didn't have to do that. I just wanted to say thank you by Cash Up and Use the Money. So if you're watching this video, you know, hit me up. If you're not watching, that's cool. I'm gonna hit you up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I can send you your money. Again, thank you all so much for supporting me. This has been absolutely amazing, this ride that I'm on with YouTube. And I just hope that we can have more transparent conversations like this. I do want to go live more. I'm just a little scared, y'all. I only did it one time. I don't know why I'm so scary. Ugh, I be feeling like, what if something goes wrong? I don't know. Don't pay me no mind. I want to go live on Instagram as well. Saturday is going to be a time where we can talk about stuff outside of hair. But for the next few Saturdays, it's going to be focused on YouTube related content. And I know that's something that people asked for when I did my year anniversary video. People wanted more content about how I became a YouTuber and some tips and stuff like that. So look out for that between this month and June. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this series. If you're excited about it, drop me your thoughts down below. Show me that you're here, that you're feeling me. If anything resonated with you during this whole Q&A, let me know. Let's talk, let's chat. And of course, as always, if you wanna see some of my latest videos, check them out over here to the right of me. If you wanna know what wig I'm wearing, that'll be in the description box. And I will see you next time. Bye. Love is a guy that thinks he's flying this. Also known as a bust down. Always talking about what he wants and just sits on his broke ass.